my experience for the entire first sort of couple of years of living in America. I, I, I'd be going, this is weird. <laughs> Did you people, so you people park a car on the ice of the lake <laughs> every winter and you take bets on when it's going, the ice is going back. They go, yep. <laughs> that seemed odd to me. The, the, the cold, the cold seemed That's odd a to point me. In I would come out. Hmm? I was a plot point in American. I guns. was an innocent, much as you people here in Los Angeles. <laughs> and, unless, unless you actually fled from someplace, <laughs> you know nothing about cold. You, you, you were like me. You thought that when puddles went hard. <laughs> And when possibly water, which you may be familiar with occasionally here, mostly in February, um, falls in, in the form of white fluffy stuff, that's cold. And that's what I thought. I didn't realize that you learn things, like you learn that if you step out of your house and you take a deep breath and all of the hairs in your nose freeze. <laughs> so that you can feel every individual hair in your nose, it is below zero Fahrenheit. <laughs> and for that matter, if you take a step out of the door, you take a deep breath, and then you cough in pain, <laughs> it is below 25 Fahrenheit. <laughs> and, and, you know, I got to learn all this kind of weird stuff. And it was all peculiar. And driving my daughter across Wisconsin to a summer camp thing and stopping by a full-sized reproduction of the second largest cheese in America circa 1962. I'm going, isn't this odd? And they're going, nope, that was shown at the World's Fair, only there was cheese inside. It's not, not this cardboard now, painted yellow, but it was... <laughs> So, so I felt alien. I felt really strange. And, I, and it wasn't one moment. It was this, this amazing accumulation of strangeness. And probably a, an accumulation of strangeness that I couldn't experience now. Because now, there is the internet. <laughs> now, now, if I get up in the morning and I want to read the news in English newspapers, I can. Or listen to... I can take my news source anywhere. I can take my information from anywhere. When I moved out here in 1992, the only way that I could get news from England was to subscribe to a weekly newspaper, which would accumulate a week's worth of news and then put it in the post, and it would arrive two weeks later. <laughs> and I would sit down and read the news from three weeks ago. And, uh, it must have killed you when you found out the Beatles broke up in 98. It must have been horrible. And that finally hit you. It, it was hard. <laughs> Apparently, at one point, we had a prime minister who was Tony Blair. And went, when did this happen? Um, you know, you, you, you were definitely... I definitely felt a very, very, very long way from home. And, I, uh, you know, that was one reason, I think, why I wrote Neverwhere and I wrote Stardust, is they were both these very, very English... There were ways of going home in my head. Um, but American Gods was much more a way of going, okay, I want to talk about this place that I'm in. But it, it's, it's so odd how this very fantastical novel is still very much a snapshot of a very specific time in the world where the strangeness was down these side roads rather than literally knocking on your computer screen every morning. There's, there's no way to get away from the strangeness anymore. It's just always hanging out. It's almost like if you did this or, or a sequel to this book, now, or five years on the road, it would have to reflect the fact that the gods and the monsters and the, the freak or, or whatever is living in the twilight world is literally being crowded out by a cat playing keyboards and, you know, David Hasselhoff just drunk eating a burger. Like, he's, like literally while he's lying there, like, Wotan's behind him, like, I can turn the air into lightning if anyone wants to... No? All right, fine, whatever, great. So, you know, you know, what, what, what... I, I mean, you're right, but you're also That's really it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Give me your mic. That's all I wanted to hear. Thank you. Dude, you owe me $500. I told you. 
sit down, pal. <laughs> and you're right, but you're also wrong in a really interesting way. Um, because one of the things that you've got going on with the internet, which I think is going to creep in to American Gods too, um, is the fact that you now have, in the old days, communities were places that people lived. And, and you associated with like-minded people, and there was always one strange person exiled out at the edge. And then the internet happened, and that allowed all of those strange people exiled out on the edge. We all found our communities. And, and the idea of virtual communities, I think, is, is hugely important. I think things, things and people and groups and ideas, for good or for evil, hit critical mass much more quickly. Yeah, I've always wondered what it would be like if someone like a Henry Darger or an H.P. Lovecraft had access to the internet. They might not have, A, they might not have been as lonely and miserable, but B, they might not have created the things they created because, because they, it's almost like H.P. Lovecraft had to create his own <coughs> through letters and you know that, that sort of world. So I don't know where this question is going. It just hit me and I said that. It's not a question. It's, like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really astute observation. Um, like, like how, how do you have a how do you have a mystery cult when there's no when when any mystery is solved in a Google search? How do you like? <laughs> uh, how Luck, luckily, we have things like. Luckily, <coughs> the internet is, is is also a god of obfuscation. Um, it, it's you may go and get answers, but they aren't always true. And if they are true, they're not complete. And um, an American Gods related thing. I, I, I hadn't told anybody this until this go round, and I thought, what the hell? I've, I've been enjoying this one much too much for the last few years, but I finally at the point where I thought, well, it's, it's a cool thing to tell people, so I'll tell people um, just on this tour, and then I'll be quiet about it again. <laughs> when I was writing American Gods, um, there wasn't a lot of research in the gods that I did. And there wasn't a lot of research in the gods because since the age of seven, I've loved myth. You know, when I was seven, my favorite book in the whole world, apart from the Narnia books, was uh, Roger Lanson and Green's Tales of Ancient Egypt. So I, I, I bought it with my own money. I love this stuff. So, I'd spent essentially, you know, 30 something years before I started writing American Gods, researching it. But I didn't know a lot about the Slavic Gods, because there really wasn't very much around. I knew about Chernobyl, probably going all the way back to Fantasia. And um, watching Fantasia as a kid and finding out this was Chernobyl and it was a Russian god, and that fascinated me. And I knew a little bit about Bielabog, I knew a little bit about Peru, but I didn't know a lot. So I went and did my research. And honestly, the amount of research when it comes down to original sources is incredibly slim. You're down to you know a few pages of stuff that the church hadn't burned and that's been recorded. Um, and I was fascinated by two characters in it, the, the Zoria. And the Zoria, um, there, were, there were two of them. There was Zoria Utsramyaya, and Zarya Vachanaya, and I probably mispronounced both of them, but they're, they're the goddess, they're the, they are the dawn of the morning and the dawn of the evening. You know, the, the sunrise and sunset. And, um, and I, I really, I was fascinated by them. And I thought, you know, it would be even cooler if there was a third. <laughs> and I, I decided to name her after, um, after an Iggy Pop song. <laughs> so I went up and found out what the Russian for midnight was. So she became Zarya Pulorashnaya, Sister Midnight. And, um, and I put her in my book. <laughs> and then Wikipedia came into existence. <laughs> and 